If you have over $200,000 sitting stagnant in your bank, retirement account, or home equity, then you're literally losing money. On this show, you learn how to get that money working for you consistently and conservatively. Learn to grow your nest egg with your host, Sean Winslow. Let's dive in. What's going on, everyone? I'm Sean Winslow, and this is the Multifamily Money Podcast. Welcome back to another Finance Friday episode. And today, I'm going to be announcing my NFT project. I cannot wait to share this with you all. It's, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to get you all into it and make a lot of money. April Fools. <laughs> Come on, guys. You know me well enough. No NF- NFTs for Sean. No, no crypto, at least not at this part of the game. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get into the real topic. As always on Finance Fridays, it's about tips, tricks, and strategies on how to get your money working for you. Um, all things personal finance, the do's and don'ts of personal finance, all in an attempt to help you keep more of that hard-earned money you make. Um, and today, I was talking with some friends about cars, because if, if you don't know, I'm a big car fan. But we were talking about um, you know, buying, financing, leasing, like which you should and should not do. And, you know, at the end of the day, it all comes back to the situation we are in life, right? There's always, you know, a strategy that's the better, right? That that's the best, but that might not be feasible in your, you know, current circumstances. And so for any finance guru out there to tell you like, this is what you should do. And this is what you shouldn't do. I get it, but it's also pertains to our situations, right? Like at the end of the day, yes, you probably should buy all your cars, right? Um, because why finance a depreciating asset? Unless you can then take that money and make a greater return, right? Then someone's going to argue, but they're not safe with, with paying, you know, having debt, right? And again, it just comes to your circumstance. But then there's going to be some people that maybe they would prefer to buy it in cash. They can't afford to do that, but they really need this car to get to their job, to start making an income, to build a life, right? So it all really comes down to your circumstance. And at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you with also being smart. So you need to know the do's and don'ts, right? Personally, you know, yes, buying in cash is probably the best way to do it because you're not paying an interest on a depreciating asset unless, you know, in the world of cars, there are cars you can buy. Um, For instance, I don't know if you can, those watching, over here on the back shelf, that's a Porsche GT3 RS 4.0 997. And if you had bought that when it came out, it was pro. I don't know what what it, what it would have been worth. Maybe around 200, maybe a little less. This was back, you know, in the early teens. Probably came out in somewhere between 12 and 15. All these Porsche heads are going to be pissed that I don't know that, and I should know this. <laughs> it was probably somewhere around 12, 2012. And now to buy that car, you're going to be in the ballpark of ballpark of 400 to half a million dollars. So <laughs> there wouldn't have been an issue financing a car like that. And then going, going around and, you know, flipping it and making, you know, several hundred thousand dollars. Um, and it also comes with the experience of having fun, right? So it's what you want in life. So there's some cars that are more of investment. So people that collect cars generally, yeah, they're collecting cars. They love cars too, but it's also an investment, right? They're, they know the industry, they know, the cars and they're buying them for a certain reason. But today we're talking about just everyday cars, cars we we daily drive and get from point A to point B. And most people would say you're going to either buy or finance, right? And and you know, I don't know about you, but I was brought up saying like stay away from leases. But lease to me, leases aren't as bad as people make them out. I think there's actually some some advantages to leases. And I just want to before I get into what the main topic of this is like, if you do have a lease, what you should do with it. I just want to break down some of the advantages of leases. So generally it's going to be a lower monthly payment because when you finance, so when you, when you actually buy the car, but finance it, that's based off of the total purchase price finance at an interest rate over a specified term. So generally that's five years, 60 months. So, right. You know, now you can go out like nine, the joke in the industry, 72, 96 months, right? That's crazy. Don't do that. Um, that's just to lower your interest, but over your, your monthly payment, but it's just going to end up having you pay more unless it's like one of those cars where then you can flip it, but that's, that's speculative. And we're not, we're not talking about that. So generally it's lower because 
it's not based on the entire amount of the car. So if you're, say you're buying, um, I don't know, let's say a Toyota Camry and let's say it's worth $25,000. Um, well, you're not going to be, your lease payment is not going to be off 25 grand because you're only going to own it. Let's most leases around 36 months to, uh, three years. And so you're going to have the end of that term. And then it's also based on a amount of miles you can use. Right. And if you go over the, the set miles, you have to pay fees. Right. So premiums on that. And generally it's around 12, 12,000 miles per year. Um, Recently, there had some have been coming down and saying 10,000 miles, but standard is 12,000 miles per year that you can, you know, go put on the car. And also they get, then they get to go ahead and you return the lease, they get to sell it. So there's some residual value there. So that's why your lease payment is generally less because they're not really financing you the, the entire thing. It's just, you're leasing it right for three years, let's say. So generally your lease payment is a little lower. So that's a benefit. Um, you get a new car every so many years. So every three years you get a, a, the newest and greatest, right? Um, there's no resale worries. So you, you don't have to worry about like, what's the market doing? Is it hard to sell a used car? Um, maybe I got into a fender bender and it's hard to sell this one. Like the Carfax is not great. W whatever it may be. Um, maybe you spec the car and no one likes it. Whatever it happens to be, maybe that car no longer exists. So it's harder to get parts. So it's, it's hard to, harder to sell, right? You don't have to worry about any of that. Worry-free maintenance. That's one of the biggest things that people love leases is all the maintenance is, is taken care of by that dealership that you, that you leased it through. So oil change, all that stuff. You don't have to worry about it. Now, fender benders getting in accidents. Sometimes the leases more often than not, they don't cover the entirety of it. So you might have to come out of pocket for some of that. Um, but all the maintenance is taken care of and that's, that's huge, right? So technically all you're paying for is the lease payment insurance and gas to operate it, right? And then little upfront money. So when you finance, unless you're getting some crazy deal where you have no money down, which I don't advise ever doing, you want to put money down when you finance. And for lease, it doesn't really make sense to put money down, right? Because you're not building any equity in this thing. This is just a lease. So there's little money upfront, which to me is an advantage because then you can go take that money and invest it somewhere and, and make a return, right? Now there are obviously are dis disadvantages like not building any equity, right? But part of me is, especially in today's market when used cars are appreciating so much, well, what's the point of, you know, in a with a depreciating asset building equity, it's, you know, they say you drive the car off the lot and it depreciates 30%. Um, and then within another year, it's another 10%. It's just crazy. And, and yeah, in today's appreciating market, you can go ahead and, you know, sell your, your car when you're financing, you'll probably come ahead. And that is a benefit, but it's also a benefit to come when it comes to leases. And we're about to get into that, but that's not something that happens all the time, right? The situation we're in with supply chain crisis and, and not being able to get chips to put in cars. So the manufacturer making a lot less new cars. So it's hard to get new cars. So the, the used car market is going up crazy in value, right? That's not going to last forever. Historically, that hasn't really been existent. So it's not something to really bank on, right? Um, so take all that in, in consideration. So, and, and the last benefit is the protection, you know, against depreciation. You don't really have to work. Like I said, you don't have to really worry about that because you're not owning it. And then the last is tax deduction. So if you're using this lease for your business, you can actually deduct both the depreciation and any financing costs. Now with lux some luxury vehicles, you're limited to this, but for general, general population car, right? This is huge. So what I was talking about is, wait, Sean, how can, how can this inflated used car market help you, you know, in, with a lease? Well, this is what I think everyone should be doing that has a lease when it comes near to the end. And that's called a lease buyout. A lot of people don't, don't know that you can do this. So at the end of your lease, there's a few things you can do. One, you just end the lease, return the car to the dealership, right? Maybe you get into another one or maybe you do something else. Um, two, you can buy the lease out and then, you know, finance that either pay for cash or finance that remaining residual and you, and you keep the car, you know, then you can go, or you can trade it in for a new lease. Um, those are kind of the, the main options you have, right. When your lease comes to an end, well, there's another one that a lot of people don't know. 
And that has to do with that lease buyout. And that's selling it or transferring your lease buyout to another party. Um, and because you, so you have the right to buy it out because the federal govern, government made this um, an option, right? They said, no, this has to happen. If there's leases, the consumer has to have the right to buy that lease out. And you also have the right to then trans transfer that right, which is really powerful. So you're coming to end of a lease and you could buy it out, but you can also sell that buyout to another party. And some of the, the common ones are Carvana, CarMax, Kelly Blue Book, Edmonds, and there's other dealerships and used car. And the, you can also do it just private sale too. But I don't recommend the private sale because that goes down to you trying to find a buyer. You know, and and that can be that can be tough in certain markets. Probably not right now, but then also you have to deal with all the the back end paperwork, title work, um, local and state taxes, and all that stuff you have to deal with. Um, so I prefer going to one of the the bigger players, the Carvanas, the Carmax, the Kelly Blue Books. It just makes they just streamline the process. Now you want to check with them because they all have different nuances in how they operate. Some, like I believe Car Carvana. I think it has to have at least two months left on the lease before they will accept it. If it's less than two months, they won't. Now, some of the others like CarMax, they, they don't care about that. So you just really want to know. So say you have a month left, Carvana most likely won't take that car. So you just want to know what their procedures and policies are. And then I would also advise just going to all of them and pricing it out and you want to get the best price, right? Um, and so what you do is you go to their website, price it out, and Let's say your residual left on your car is 21,000. So to buy it out, you know, it'd be 21,000 plus some they'll throw in fees, right? So it might come out, um, the throw in fees plus anything you have left on the lease payment. So it might come out to like 23, let's say to buy it out, right? But the residual is 21. So let's say you go to Carvana, they offer you 26. CarMax offers you 25. Kelly Blue Book offers you you know, 23. So then you gotta say, well, obviously Car Carvana is the best, right? Um, 26 grand, you know, you'd make four grand in profit minus any fees um, or tax, but four grand, that's great, right? Um, so you're gonna go to them, initiate the process. Let's assume you have two months or more left on your lease. They buy it out. You make four grand, you wash your hands of it. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done, right? And that's why I advi advise everyone to do at least to look into it. And even if you, even if it comes out to like net, let's say, let's say they only offer you 23, right? And it, and that's what it is to get out of this, this car, anyways. The reason I would still do this is because if you were just to return your car, they're going to hit you with fees for disposition fees, um, wear and tear fees, and the list goes on, right? If you're in over any miles, they're going to hit you with those fees. Um, but if you simply just buy it out, you're not going to be hit with that and you're going to make money on, on this, right? So this is what I advise to do if you have a lease. No matter if you make a profit or not, it's to get out of having to pay any of those fees and then potentially make a profit. You know, and with the crazy market is today where we have used cars, you know, selling for insane amounts. You, you could make like good money. I've heard people making five, six grand um, by doing this and they wouldn't if they just returned their lease. Um, so it's, this is a great strategy. This episode is going to be quick. Um, if you're in a lease, this is what I highly recommend doing. Now this episode isn't on whether you should do a lease or not, or pay cash or finance, right? Might do that later down the road, but as I said, it really comes down to your situation and, and where you are, where you're at in life. And sometimes even a lease, even a lease works for people that are maybe really financially secure and they could pay cash. They maybe they want a new car every three years. They don't want to worry about paying for maintenance, and they just want to be able to, you know, at the end of the day, you know, maybe go do a lease buyout and transfer that lease buyout, make a little bit of money, and then get into another lease. It's a solid way to do it, right? Um, because you have to you have to pay for a car, right? To operate anyways. So those are kind of my two cents on the topic. Um, so if you're in a lease, 
and you're coming near the end, I would highly recommend that, especially in today's market. You're almost guaranteed to make some money doing this. All right, everyone. I hope there was some value in this. I, I know this is a strategy that I would I would implement, but it's up to everyone listening. So I hope you, hope you got some value out of this. As always, on, on Fridays, we talk everything personal finance, little money tips and strategies here and there to help us get our, our money working for us harder and so we can have more of it to do what we want to do in life. All right, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, this is Sean Winslow. After being in the financial service industry for years and having candid conversations with good people just like you, I realized that so many of us are wanting an investment strategy that provides solid returns and consistent income without the bumps in the road. There's little known secret that your financial advisor doesn't want you to know. There is investment out there that is less volatile and the returns are stronger. Get more details by going to greenbriarcg.com and clicking on the free e-report. And by the way, if this show has provided you any value, then feel free to leave an honest written review and of course, share it with a friend who needs it. See you next week for another great show.